All right, guys, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about camping. Now, if you came from the last camping video, you know that I said that uh, they're not telling you the truth about camping. They always want to tell you the good sides and nothing about the challenging sides. But in today's video, I'm going to show you what's a good tow vehicle, where you should start. Also, tell you the challenges. Well, let's just be honest. I'm going to tell you what I hate about my camper. So we're going to get right into that video. All right, so let's go. Now, if it's your first time coming to the channel, my name is Tall and this is YouTube channel Traveling Tall and the channel is usually about motorcycles, Harley Davidson motorcycles, and 95% about motorcycles. 5% of the time we do stuff like camping videos, bike riding videos, just videos about stuff in general. But in today's video, I'm just going to be sharing the truth about camping. Well, my truth about camping and my experience. Now, I've been camping for ever since I was a kid. We went camping back in the 70s. That's how long ago we've been camping. Well, maybe not 70s, but in the 80s we were, we were camping. But I, as like a lot of you, bought into this whole thing during COVID where since I grew up camping, I ended up buying a camper because I still wanted to travel and I like the experience of camping. So I went out in 2022 and bought a camper. And I moved a little too fast and I can tell you, don't make the same mistakes that I made. I'm gonna be sharing with you the mistakes that I made and hopefully you will not make the same mistakes. So guys, that second one right there, right there, that's my camper right up there. That's where we're gonna be walking up to. I'm gonna tell you everything about it. I told you that we're gonna go uh, take a look at my camper and we are, but there's some things that I want to share with you before we go up there and actually look at the camper and the, the tow vehicle. Well, the towing vehicle. Camping is fun and it can be very inexpensive. Like for instance, staying at this campground here is a little under $100, $100 a day for the week. And I'm on ocean front. Well, I'm on the sound front. Now those hotels just right over there, when I looked at them, they were $350 a night. $350 a night times seven, it get to be about $2,300, $2,400, right? Well, staying here, I'm under $700 for the whole week. But it does take a lot more gas to tow that camper here than just to take my truck and come here and stay in the hotel. But there's benefits of having the camper because I brought both of the dogs with me, which the hotel did allow pets but there was a pet fee but the convenience of having everything that i need being able to take the dogs outweighed the inconvenience and the extra fuel cost of bringing the camper okay guys so this is the tow vehicle right here now this is my 2022 chevrolet 1500 with a door max 3.0 this vehicle right here tows my camper which is an 18 rr black label gray wolf camper that weighs roughly about 4,000 pounds that happens to be a toy hauler now the reason why i need it to be a toy hauler because as i said in the beginning of the videos i have harley davidson motorcycles and i go to a lot of events and i take my harleys to the events and i use the toy hauler well that's what i bought it for but let, let, i'll go into great detail about that later on that camper behind me 4,000 pounds thousand pound harley 500 pounds worth of stuff. Um, it's advertised as a lightweight camper that you can pull it with an SUV, a van, a lightweight SUV, like a Toyota 4Runner, a van, or something like that. You can pull it with a, a 4Runner or, or Jeep Gladiator, because I have a Jeep Gladiator, and I'll tell you the experience about that. But you wouldn't want anything any less than a 1500 truck to pull that camper with. You could have, I mean, or an SUV uh, with a V8 or with the new V6s. 
anything under the, other than that, you would have a horrible experience. Back to the Gladiator. I have an uh, enclosed trailer with two Harley Davidsons in it, and I was on my way to South Dakota. Well, the trailer 7x12, and it probably weighs 2,000 pounds. I had the two Harleys in it weighing 1,000 pounds each, which is about 4,000 pounds, pulling the trailer all the way from Tennessee to South Dakota. And that Jeep Gladiator with the V6, I got going through the Badlands five miles to the gallon. I had to stop. I was on empty every 110 miles with the Gladiator. It was just completely horrible. So I knew that it could pull it, but it wasn't the right vehicle to pull it. And that can hinder your whole camping experience if you choose the wrong vehicle. So I recommend that you find a 1500 truck. A Duramax 3.0 is great, but I'd like to have the bigger Duramax because I'm going to get a bigger rig. So a 1500 truck will do what you need it to do. And it's, um, again, those other things will do it, but they're not really made for it. So when the salesman tells you that, don't believe it. This is the uh, Gray Wolf 18 RR Black Label. Black Label, the difference between the Black Label, the sides are smooth versus the, uh, the, the, the non-smooth sides. I can't think of the word what I'm looking for. And it has different doors, different windows, a little bit of upgrades on the inside. Um, weighs roughly 4,000 pounds, like I said before. And there are some things about this camper that I like and some things that I absolutely hate. And I'm gonna be sharing with you some things that I could help you with that I would tell you never buy. So you know what to look for when you're purchasing on your next camper. This is the uh, back porch that folds down. It's actually the ramp that makes it a toy hauler where I can roll the motorcycles up and strap them down on the inside. Now, it doesn't work that well as a toy hauler and I'll get into that and explain in just a minute, but it's perfect for this. I couldn't see having a, an RV without having a back porch on the back of it. It's completely awesome to be able to stand out here or sit out here and check the view out and let the dogs get some sun. That's the best part of this, this little small toy hauler here that I have. As far as having it as loading the motorcycles in, it's a nightmare. Bringing a thousand pound Harley Davidson up this steep ramp, it's just a complete nightmare. But you can do it it's just not something that you would want to do on a daily basis. Like the last time we went to Panama City and I took the bike, it was very sketchy loading it and unloading it. And um, sometimes I will opt out from taking the camper and just stay in a hotel or some sort of cabin just because it's so difficult to load the motorcycles. And one of the reasons why it's so difficult to load the motorcycles is because this camper actually has a lift on it. You can see it has off-road wheel package and they lifted it up. I'm never taking it off-road. I don't understand why anybody would do that. It does have extra clearance, but I haven't been in a situation where I needed the extra clearance of this camper. So lifting the camper up actually makes the ramp a whole, whole lot steeper and trying to pull the motorcycle up, most of the time I will, the ramp is so steep, I will drag the exhaust on the bottom end of it and pulling the motorcycle down, if you're trying to go down in a slow manner by holding the front brake, it just usually slides down the ramp, which makes it very difficult, again, balancing a thousand pound Harley Davidson, trying to get it out of this, <laughs> this uh, toy hauler here. Does it look good? The lift look good? Yeah, it looks good because it matches the lift on the truck, but it's not, it's not conducive for hauling motorcycles or pretty much anything as a toy hauler. But again, the back porch is the thing that I like the most. Speaking of these oversized wheels and tires, if you can see this here, you put the uh, spare tire underneath here. The opening is only yay big. The spare tire is way bigger than the opening, so I have to lift up the bed that's inside, put the spare tire in there. It will not go through this door. The awning is really nice. It's nice sitting out here on a summer day, have some shade, and um, we usually put the chairs out right there, and you have a plug. There's a place for a television, but we don't watch TV when we're camping. That just seems like it defeats the purpose. We get out to see this. It has blue LED lights at nighttime, kind of sets the vibe. It's really cool. Um, and that's pretty much it on the outside. Now on the inside, you notice on the outside, it didn't really have any complaints, but the inside is where the complaints start. So 
if I was doing it again, which I will be doing again, we, we're going to be buying another one. We're going to buy a, a bigger one of these or maybe even a driving RV. So we'll see. You guys have to tune into the channel to let me know and also comment and let me know what you think I should get. But we're going to go inside and I'm going to give you my top issues that I have with this 18 foot black label Grey Wolf toy hauler. Let's go. We about to ride, we about to ride. It's that time of year again, Traveling Tall's Run to the Hills 4. If you missed the first one, the second one, and the third one, do not miss the fourth one. It's gonna be bigger and better this year. With rides leaving Friday and Saturday from Bootlegger Harley Davis. Riding Harleys all over the place, that's what we do. Starting at 9 a.m. each day, kickstands up at 10.30. Come on out to Bootlegger Harley Davidson to meet your favorite content creator. There will be vendors and merchandise for sale. The ride is free, but Friday night we're going to be having a banquet with good food, special guests, and giveaways. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when tickets become available. We have limited seating, and last year they sold out quickly. And to book your stay at the host hotel, make sure you click the link in the description below. You like motorcycles? You like to ride? You like to meet good people? Then this event's for you. Everyone is welcome. But ride responsible and ride at your own risk. June 7th and 8th, 2024, Traveling Tall's Run to the Hills 4. You're invited and share this post with your friends. I hope to see you there. Keep gliding and as always, have a blessed day. I know that you probably can't see because it's light behind me and it's dark in here. I'm going to, I'll change the view of the camera in just a minute. This area back here, it's sort of the garage slash living area. This table is removable. I flip up this couch here that also doubles as a bed. These D-rings here, here. You have two right here and you have two right there. Now, the issue with that is with a motorcycle, my Harley is eight feet long. So I pull my motorcycle up the ramp, which takes a while to get it up the ramp, but I'll pull my motorcycle up the ramp and then I have a D-ring here and a D-ring here and two D-rings back there. If I were to pull it up here, I'll be blocking the entrance door and I'll be blocking the bathroom door. I can't get in the camper, first of all, and if I could get in, it'd be hard to use the restroom because the motorcycle would be blocking that. So these are pointless. You can't use these. Now, Back here, this is the pantry. Here's a D-ring hook. There's a D-ring hook. When you have the motorcycle here, you have two straps coming down right there. You can't get into the pantry because the motorcycles, first of all, it's partially in the way, but the, D the straps get in the way that you can't open the pantry door. And then the most important thing, when you're traveling on the road, you want to stop, you know, pull off the rest area and get you something to eat. Your refrigerator's here. If your motorcycle's here, you can't get into the refrigerator. You can get into the freezer, but you can't get into the refrigerator. I mean, you have to, you can open it barely and try to get in there, but it's so close that it's, it's just makes it unusable because Motorcycle is going to be about right here and it's going to go all the way to about here because you're going to use those last D-rings to tie it down. And truth, truth be told, the D-rings are in the worst possible space. I didn't bring the motorcycle this time. I brought two e-bikes and even it was difficult even trying to load two e-bikes in this thing because they just didn't place the D-rings in the right place. Now, my suggestion is I say get rid of the D-rings all together, run one long E-track along the side of the camper here, an E-track along this side of the camper here, and that would give the customer multiple spaces to tie down their motorcycle. And now some people might not want E-track, they might not like the way it looks, but if you're buying a toy hauler, then you're buying a toy hauler for a reason. So this is not the, uh, the, the, the proper travel trailer or toy hauler for any cruiser, any sport bike, or anything other than a four-wheeler. Now, on a positive note, before we get to some more other things that I don't like, when the motorcycle's not in here, from pantry door back, this is the perfect 
small um, travel trailer. It's a great layout. Now, from the pantry forward, I have an issue with everything. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay guys, so the camera footage might be a little bit shaky now because the bathroom is not even big enough to bring the tripod in. So <laughs> let me show you. This is the bathroom here. You have the toilet here, the sink, the medicine cabinet, and the shower. Now, you can't probably see it, but this shower head right here is the silliest thing that they've ever put in the camper. It stands probably um, four feet tall. This right here, it, it doesn't do anything for me. My wife, it almost hits her in the eye every time. Uh, these things right here, it's exclusive to the black label. It's supposed to be kind of fancy and it is a complete waste of time and effort to ever put this in this little bitty bathroom. Now, you see the, the skylight here? I'm 6'6". Six, six. My head goes right here. My head touches the top of this when I'm in here. <laughs> I understand that it's not going to be extremely comfortable for people that's 6'6", six, six, but everybody complains about this bathroom. This toilet here, it's so little in this bathroom that with the door closed, it's hard to even use this toilet. It's so cramped in here. The sink is small, which is okay, but the faucet barely goes over the sink. So when you try to wash your hands, you're hitting the back of the sink. The medicine cabinet sticks so far over the sink that when you try to brush your teeth, you're constantly hitting your head on this mirror right here. You can't even really rinse your mouth or whatever without hitting your head on the mirror because it's just so close. So the bathroom, it's horrible. If you do anything, upgrade to the next size where you can get a better bathroom. A bad bathroom will definitely give you a bad camping experience. This is the absolute worst part of this camper. This, if I could tell you anything, avoid this at all costs. Spend the extra money, I'm telling you, spend the extra money for this. This bed right here. First of all, the mattress wasn't good, but we upgraded, we got a better mattress. That's not what I'm saying. This bed right here, it's not a walk around bed. Spend the extra money and get you a walk around bed. It is impossible to make this bed up nice. The only time this bed was made up nice was when we picked it up from the factory and it looked decent. It didn't even look nice then, but it is so difficult to make this bed up. You have to get on the bed, tuck the covers in all the way around and, and, and guys, again, being six foot six like I am, there is no room on this bed. Down here, they got this little wooden panel, so my feet are hanging off at least a foot every time I'm trying to sleep. And the air does not circulate back here like it does the rest of the camper. It's hot and stuffy, it's dark, it's difficult to make, and if you do anything, if you take anything from this video, get a walk around bed, okay? All right, so let, so let me show you, if you can't see around this corner, let me show you what it looks like. You got a window back there, and, and that bed is made up. <laughs> That's not what you want. You do not want this. You have this little curtain for privacy, or whatever, but the next one I get, I will have a door and a bedroom. This is not, do not get this. I'm telling you, you will regret having it. Um, you have some storage up here up top, storage for clothes, and you have a little closet right here for some hang up clothes. Definitely not enough storage in this, this, uh, this trailer at all. A few more things and then we're gonna wrap this video up. This is your thermostat for your heat. So you can turn your heat on, your heat will come on. When it reaches a certain temperature, your heat will go off. That's fine, the heat works fine. But the problem is this. 
right here. This air condition. The brand is uh, Coleman's Mock, I think so. The issue with this rooftop AC is this. First of all, when it gets really hot, you have the AC on, it freezes up. If you run it in a really hot environment, it gets cold, it works well, but then eventually, four or five hours later, it freezes up and it stops working. And that's an issue when you're traveling with pets because you're out having a good time, your dog's in a camper, you think they're all nice and cool, but this freezes up and the AC goes out. And now they're in a hot box in the middle of Key West, Florida, 90, 100 plus degrees, not a good idea. That shouldn't be an issue. I shouldn't have to worry about that, but that is a worry that I have with this unit. And another thing is, at night, when it is working properly, it could be hot in the daytime and you have the air condition turned on. There's only two, well, four settings. Low fan, high fan, low cool, and high cool. So if you put it on high cool at nighttime because it's hot and you're trying to go to sleep and you have it on high cool, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning where the temperature really drops and gets low, it's still blowing at full capacity on high cool and three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, you are freezing to death because this thing does not shut off when it gets to a certain temperature because it doesn't have a thermostat like that. So I recommend for you to get a thermostat that controls the air conditioned temperature. So it will shut off when it re reaches a certain degrees or turn on when it gets to a certain degrees of heat, it will turn on. That right there is a major gripe and complaint. I will never get one that is made like this with two controls. It's so hard to set it to a level of comfort. I'm used to being at the house, you set it to 72 degrees or whatever, and then it cuts on when it needs to cut on, shuts off when it needs to shut off. Definitely spend the extra money for that. Buying the wrong camper can actually stop you or give you a bad impression thinking that having a camper is not a good idea. And I wish I would have went with my first instinct just to buy one a little bit bigger because uh, 18 feet is a nice size camper, but the layout of the bathroom and the layout of the bed, and I know it's probably due to that it's a toy hauler, is it's just a pain. And I find, I, I find myself and my wife, uh, we take the camper a lot less than we think we, we was going to take it because of the issues that I explained to you in the video earlier. Now, if I had a bigger camper, there, there is a, there's such thing of getting something too big. Um, like when I tell people it's riding motorcycles, everybody wants to have an experience riding motorcycles. They say, I want a Harley, what type of Harley I do, should I get? You can buy something that's just too big and you're not gonna get a good experience and, you, and then you might just give it up altogether. Or you can buy something that's too small, that's not enough for you and then you just, you know, have another bad experience and you just give it up altogether. And I think camping is the same way. Um, if, if I was giving you some advice, I would say, go ahead and, and, and buy the one that you want to get the best overall experience. I don't think you should buy the beginning, the beginner camper, because there's a learning curve, no matter which one you get, there's a learning curve that you have to, uh, have to uh, learn or adjust to, you know, with anything that you get. I could get the same amount of experience on one that's two feet more, just as well as I can get on that one that's an 18. Just buy the one you want the first time, you know, and have a better overall experience because if you don't, you could get a bad experience and then you can just think it's not for you completely. And I, I tell you what, I love it. I think it's great. And that's why I'm going to be buying another camper or a motor coach. Who knows? We'll see. All right, guys. So I want to thank y'all for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. Put it in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. There's other videos on the channels that has to do with camping. Most of them have to do with motorcycles. But if you like camping videos, you'd like me to make more of them. Make sure you comment and put that in the section below.
Again, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Keep gliding, and as always, have a blessed day.